Well, good Friday morning, folks. Um, it is July 17th, and uh, it's supposed to be a hot one today, just what we didn't need with the lack of rain that we've just not been able to catch a break on rain. Uh, so let's keep redoubling our efforts each day, praying for rain, and hopefully maybe we'll get some um, soon because we desperately need it. Um, so I want to remind you that to tomorrow I will live stream, but I'm going to be live streaming on the road tomorrow because Gail and I have got appointments in Omaha uh, tomorrow, and so we will be making the journey westward ho. Um, so I will be doing uh, this on the road, as they say. So uh, today we are going to continue on through uh, Second Peter and the third chapter. We're going to uh, be looking at verses 3 to 7 only today. And uh, then probably tomorrow morning on the road, we'll finish, uh, I'll probably finish the chapter up tomorrow. That's my, that's my think, thought process at the moment anyway. If I don't change that as the day goes by or in the morning when I wake up and I get going. Because today I had a different idea until I woke up this morning and I changed it. That's just kind of, as you all know, I want to do that very thing. So let's, uh, this is Friday and it's one of my days I'm supposed to be off. I'm going to be in, in and out part of, the, part of the day, but I'm going to leave here shortly and run a quick errand um, and uh, deal with a few things and then I'll be back later. Um, but at any rate, let's just jump right into this this morning and get started. Um, we are in the third chapter and the third chapter in the NRSB is entitled The Promise of the Lord's Coming. And we're going to continue, we talked about that just a little bit yesterday, uh, but not much, but we're going to continue on in that vein for the remainder of this book, okay? So let's look at verses 3 to 7 right now, okay? First of all, you must understand this, that in the last days, scoffers will come scoffing and indulging their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? Forever, forever since our ancestors died, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. They deliberately ignore this fact that by the word of God, heavens existed long ago and an earth was formed out of water and by means of water, through which the world of that time was deluged with water and perished. But by the same word, the present heavens and earths have been reserved for fire, being kept until the day of judgment and destruction of the godless. So, um, with all the craziness going on in the world, um, and I, I seem to have seen More and more folks, it seems like, are posting about, Lord, come quickly, or, you know, and and thinking that the, the, that perhaps the, the, the end is near and almost prayerful um, uh, that the Lord will come again. And we do have to bear in mind, during Paul's life, Paul was absolutely, utterly convinced that Christ was, his second coming was going to come before Paul passed. Um and, of course, that was an issue that had to be dealt with. And that's what's going on here. You know, Pete, what's, what, what's up? You know, by this time, if, in fact, this is not Peter writing this, and this is, in fact, uh, a disciple of his, most likely Paul and Peter were martyred roughly, this, you know, in, in, in close, close proximity and time to one another. And so Paul's probably gone. And, you know, if it's Peter's been executed already, then... Obviously, Peter's gone as well, and the Lord's not come again. So, what's the deal here? We were, you know, we we were certain that that Brother Paul and Brother Brother Peter would be there with us to witness Christ coming again, um, and so there is this anxiety and this angst and this doubt that's crept in, and of course, we're now nearly two thousand years removed, um, uh, not quite yet. We got another to the time that Paul and Peter probably were executed. We've probably got another. 45-ish to 50-ish almost years to go um, before we get to that. So, uh, but the time's coming uh, when we get to 2,000 years is what I meant. Um, so we are closing in that 1,900 plus years since the, the, their deaths, and yet Christ has not come again. So we definitely have people have always had people throughout the history of Christianity saying, well, he said he was come, where is he? And we're, we're doubting and wondering. And um, the thing we want to be careful is we, we don't, you know, we don't um, need, feel that God needs to live by our timeline. We need to live by God's timeline. Um, and again, as you all know, and I'm very adamant about this, um, I don't like trying to decipher and discern 
when the end time is coming. I find that not to be particularly faithful. In fact, I find that to be unfaithful because we're told that only the Son, only the Father knows. Um, but our, where we're to be faithful is to, to stay diligent. Um, but we'll get into that more tomorrow. Here we want to remember that the, that the goal of God is that all knees will bow before Christ. And so if he's delaying uh, his coming in order that more may come to him, then who are we to become anxious and, and insistent that, Lord, please come? Um, uh, and who are we to even plead that? Um, we, we should, you know, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Um, his will will be done. And we should just continue to pray for that. We shouldn't even... You know, we, 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 Lord, forgive us when, out of exasperation, we, we, we make these pleas uh, that, that, that like that. That, Lord, please come soon. Um, uh, that's, you know, Lord, come in thy time. That's a better thing to exclaim. And give me the, 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 the strength and the endurance and the courage to endure. Um, and we have to remember that as crazy as these times are, um, our ancestors have seen, you know, our ancestors in Christ, those that, that came before us in the Christian faith, saw some crazy times as well, and on certainly on parallel um, to what we're experiencing now. We just have gone through a, a relative period of time where things have been pretty sanitized, if you want to look at it that way, and we've gotten quite soft where any amount of discomfort becomes a real grievance to us and many of the grievances that we seem to be expressing um, uh, you know our ancestors would look like come on buck up and toughen up Sonny, because you know at least you know where your next meal is coming from um, for the majority of us there are a few that do not um, but we do have programs in place in this in this country anyway there's other parts of the world they certainly don't but but here in this country, there are programs that if one wants to avail themselves of it, the, the, the assistance is, is there, and we want to continue that assistance, and we, we want to continue to try to bring people to that. But that's another, that's another dialogue for another day. Um, what I want to leave you with today is just that just remain faithful. Remember that there are people going to say, well, where is your Jesus? Why, why didn't he come again? Look at all the craziness. And those are the scoffers. Um, and it's, uh, it's interesting, it says indulging their own lust. That's, you know, again, um, there seems to be this um, you know, condemnation of this submitting to the worldly ways. Um, and I didn't look that up in the Greek to see whether that was more of a sexual thing or a physical thing. You know, we could have lust for many things. Um, typically, though, we think of it as, as being the sin, or the sexual type sins. And... Um, that's certainly something we're seeing getting crazier and crazier by the day, and and um, that for us, for for many of us, that is that is a, a burden. Um, but again, we have to remember that even as as atrocious as these saints are, most of them probably pale in comparison to some of the stuff that was going on in Peter and Paul's day in Rome. Rome was a decadent society; it was incredibly perverse. Um, and horrible things but we don't want to go back to that kind of thing so we want to keep the world from going back to that if we can and that's that's where we're called to to, to work and to serve so uh, is to try to turn this into a, a, a try to help people to come to christ and to, to, to turn this into a more uh pious and and uh, um, less lust filled i guess let's put it that way world so um, with that, um, well, we, I, will, I will mention just a little bit about verse seven. Talks about the, the you know that the earth's going to basically perish in fire, and that may be very you know um, whether we want to take that literally or we don't, because there you know I'm not going to uh, judge literal interpretations or metaphoric interpretations. I have my preference. Um, who knows what that's going to be? Is that going to be an asteroid that's going to hit Earth? Is that going to be uh, Yellowstone erupting? Uh, which well past the time to erupt folks um, please realize that uh, and should it erupt that will be a real uh, that could depend on the, the, the severity of the eruption that could certainly be uh, the demise of most if not all human life on this planet um, so we you know what a cheery thing to say um, but at any rate 
Um, there, there is an indication there you know, of what the destruction may may well be. Um, I guess it's either you know uh, an asteroid or a, or a comet or or a volcanic eruption. There are a number of of uh, super volcanoes on this world that would that that uh, are capable of being so they say world stoppers, and uh, we want to look out for those. Um, and that's a, you know, that's not something we can stop as human beings. None of those things are things we can stop. We just have to be faithful, and we have to do the work and diligent. God knows when it's already going to happen. Because, if, as I've mentioned before, God, in my opinion, exists outside of time. There's some support for that, actually, in Ecclesiastes. I need to read that again. Um, stumbled on that the other day, and um, there's some I found that interesting. But that's, again, another thing for another day. Um, let's just remain patient. Let's remain prayerful. Let's try to do our do the work of bringing more people in because for whatever reason why God's delayed this nearly two thousand years, um, that, that's God's that's God's work. Not not our that's not it's above our pay grade as they say. Um, we just have to be faithful and uh, and uh, keep keep trudging forward and doing the work um, and realize that there's a reason for it. So. With that, I'm going to let you go to do your work for today, which is to be a blessing to someone. Um, we try to we try to uh, do what we can each and every day, and little by little, we're getting closer to the goal. Okay, so don't think of the world as going crazy. Think of the world as uh, as an opportunity to uh, to spread the word, an opportunity. Um, so we've got a lot of opportunity, folks. Let's let's take it. Let's let's do our do our do our bidding and do our calling. All right. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow morning on the road again. Okay. The, the on the road version of the devotion. So God bless and we'll see you then. Bye-bye.